بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the ex expansion units 1 to 4 We'll take two lessons today the language plus and the writing lesson in pages 70 and 71 So the language plus if you open your book page 70 you will see six uh, pictures The first picture is the woman uh, checking the to-do list This is an overload she has much to do uh, uh, in the to-do uh, list and you'll also see the arm load the picture of the man carrying the books the, he has an arm load of uh, books and you'll see the picture of the truck with the, with the water uh, melons so this is a truck load of watermelons and you'll see the download someone connecting the USB flash to the laptop the download and also the upload upload is from your device to the laptop from the camera to the uh, uh, to the laptop and also the man carrying the box his uh, this is an off load to put the box down this is an off uh, load so uh, focus on the pictures and their captions, the words uh, that are there. What do all of these words have in common? Download, upload, offload, truckload, armload, overload. So what do all these six words, all of these words have in common? Yes, that's correct. They end with load. They end with the word load, download, upload, overload, etc. That's correct. A load is an amount of something that a person or a vehicle can carry. So the word load means the amount of something that a, a vehicle or some uh, or a person can carry. When you carry an arm load, it means what your arms can carry. This is an arm load. Uh, on the other hand, the truck load, it's uh, how, uh, how much the truck can carry. So again, a load is an amount of something that a person or a vehicle can carry. So what does the woman have in her hand? Look at the picture. What does the woman have an, in her hand? And she is so much surprised to see it. Yes, a to-do list, a lot of to-do list actually. Uh, what's her problem? So what's the problem? Why does she seem confused? So, yes, she has too much to do. She has an overload of work. So she, uh, she has too much to do. She has an overload uh, uh, of work, an overload of uh, work. Is there a lot of fruit in the truck or little? If you see the picture of the truck, again, the question, is there a lot of fruit in the truck or just a little yes that's correct there's a lot in the truck the truck is full actually so it's a truck load of fruit when the truck is full here we can say it's a truck load of fruit excellent what is someone doing with the computer and the memory stick when you look at the picture of the laptop the computer and the uh, memory stick what is he doing with the computer and the memory stick? Yes, that's correct. They are downloading computer games for uh, the computer to the memory stick. So this is downloading, to download something from the internet. The uh, next question here, what is someone doing with the camera and the computer? If you look at the picture with the camera and the computer, what are they doing? Yes, that's correct. They're uploading pictures from the camera to the computer. So if you're moving files from your device, a camera or USB, to the computer, this is upload. This is upload. And the other side, it's download. So again, they're uploading pictures from the camera to the computer. How many books is the man carrying? The man carrying the books. How many books? Yes, he's carrying an armload of books. You can see the books are reaching to the up of his arm. So this is an armload of uh, books. You're excellent. What is the man doing with the boxes? What is the man carrying the box? What is he doing with the boxes? 
Okay, let's check the answer together. He's taking them off the boat. So he is offloading them. He's carrying them from the boat to the shore. So he is offloading them. Again, he's taking them off the boat, which means that he is offloading them. So complete each sentence with one of the words shown from the pictures on page 70. We have six words, overload, truckload, armload, download, upload, and offload. Again, complete each sentence with one of these words shown here. The first one, a of supplies has arrived to help the victims of the earthquake. The victims of the earthquake. So, a of supplies to help them. Of supplies has arrived to help the uh, victims of the earthquake. Yes, that's correct. A truckload of supplies. So the truck is full of supplies to help the victims of the earthquake. Excellent. Number two, you need to those crates carefully. They're full of computer equipment. You need to those crates. Crates are like boxes. The, uh, those crates carefully. They're full of computer equipment. So, which word is uh, 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 fitting here? Yes, you need to offload those crates uh, carefully. They're full of computer equipment. So when you move them, when you carry them, when you offload them, try to be careful because they're full of uh, computer equipment. Uh, number three, grab an of dirty clothes and bring it to the laundry room. Bra uh, grab an uh, of dirty clothes and bring it to the laundry room. So, okay, let's check the answer together here. Grab an armload of dirty clothes and bring them and bring it to the laundry room. So grab an armload of dirty clothes. Try to pick up your dirty clothes until it reaches to the highest point of your arm. This is an arm load and bring it to the laundry room. Number four, we can our presentation onto the classroom internet site. We can our presentation onto the classroom internet site. So, internet website. Yes, that's correct. We can upload our presentation on the classroom internet site so uh, everyone can see it. Uh, number five, you shouldn't that electrical outlet with so many appliances. Again, you shouldn't that electrical outlet with so many appliances. Don't connect them all. So you don't, yes, you don't overload. You shouldn't overload that electrical outlet with so many appliances. Don't overload electricity. Number six, I'm going to a game from a new online game store. When you put a game from the internet to your computer, what are you doing here? Yes, you are downloading the game. I'm going to download a game from a new online game store. Excellent, let's continue here. Uh, here's a language builder for you. Try to focus here. Overload can be a noun or a verb. So the word overload could be used as a noun or could be used as a verb. For example, we had an overload of work this weekend. We had an overload of work this weekend. So overload here is a noun. It's not a verb. No one is doing something. No one is doing something. On the other hand, the, uh, the second example here, don't overload the boat. Don't overload the boat. So overload here is a verb. The expression truckload is sometimes used to mean a lot of something, not literally things on a truck. So the term truckload, it doesn't always mean that there's a truck. No, it's just an expression to, means a lot, to mean uh, a lot of something. Again, the expression tr uh, truckload is sometimes used to mean a lot of something, not a literal uh, thing on truck. For example, we earned a truckload of money last summer. We earned a truckload of money last summer. It doesn't mean that we earned a truck full of money. No, this is just an expression to mean that we earned a lot of uh, money. 
An arm load is as much as a person can carry in his arms. Arm load, as I said previously, arm load is as much as you can carry with your arm. This word is almost always used to describe what someone is carrying. It's to describe what are you carrying. Again, an arm load is as much as a person can carry in his arms. From the word arm load. This word is almost always used to describe what someone is carrying. We download files from the internet to a computer or a memory stick. We upload pictures from a camera to a computer. We also upload files from a computer to the internet. So when you, when you move files from, your, from, from the computer to the internet, this is uploading. This is uploading. The other way around, from the internet to your computer, this is downloading. So this is the writing section here, tools for writing capitalization, how to use capital letters. Uh, the first point here, don't capitalize names of seasons. The names of seasons, don't capitalize them. Fall, uh, winter, don't capitalize them. We use a capital letter for, pay attention here, we use capital letters for the first letter of the first word of a sentence. So the first letter of the first word of a sentence. The second one, days of the week, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and the months, when you say January, February of the year, and holidays. Uh, the pronoun, countries, nationalities, and languages. Proper nouns, specific people, places, organizations. The first word of quoted sentence. So again, the, uh, we use capital letters for the first letter of the first word of a sentence. When you say, he's a student, he's a student. This is the first letter of the sentence. He's a student. Days of the week, months of the year, and holidays. When it's days of the week, for example, Monday, uh, months of the year, for example, January, and holidays, when any specific holiday, we begin it with the capital letter. The pronoun, the pronoun, I'm here. When you say I'm here, the pronoun I is always capitalized. Countries, nationalities, and languages, for example, Mexico, Venezuelan, and Spanish language. Uh, countries, nationalities, and languages. Proper nouns. Proper nouns, specific people, places, and organizations. Uh, Tom, this is a name of a specific people. Places like New York, organizations like Microsoft. So when you name these, always use the capital letter. The first word of a quoted sentence. When you uh, try to write a quoted sentence, begin with a capital letter. He said, that's a great car. The word that here, we began it with the capital T. So these are uh, some pointers for using uh, capital letters and when uh, not to use capital letters in, uh, for example, here in the names of the seasons. So let's go here to the next exercise. Rewrite each sentence with the correct capitalization, with the correct capitalization. So each sentence here is full of mistakes regarding the capitalization of the letters. So you have to correct them. The first one, my mother and I traveled to London together last year. My mother and I traveled to London together last year. So this sentence is full of mistakes regarding the capital letters. The ca uh, capital letters. How do you correct it? Okay, let's see the correct answer together. Yes, my mother, capital M, because it's the beginning of the sentence, and I, the pronoun I, traveled to London with a capital L together last year. Excellent, you were correct. Number two, will James attend Harvard University in the fall? Again, will James attend Harvard University in the fall? So now you get this exercise. Try to answer number two. Okay, let's see the correct answer together. Will James, capital W and capital J, attend Harvard University with the capital H and U in the fall? So fall with a small f. Don't capitalize the seasons uh, with the small f in the fall. 
Excellent. Number three, when I asked to see the doctor, uh, when I asked to see Dr. Attar, the receptionist said, the doctor just left. This is a quotation. The doctor just left. So how do we correct this? Yes, when I, capital W, capital I, asked to see Dr. Attar, both capitalized, the receptionist said, excellent, with a capital T, the doctor just left because uh, the beginning of the quotation, we put capital. Number four, people from Haiti speak French and Creole. People from Haiti speak French and Creole. So, yes, let's check it together. People, capital P, from Haiti, with a capital H, speak French with a capital F and Creole with a capital C. Excellent. Last one, number five. This year, Earth Day falls on a Tuesday. This year, Earth Day falls on a Tuesday. Okay, this year, the capital T. Earth Day, yes, with the capital E and a D, falls on Tuesday with a capital T. Excellent, you were correct. Here's a writing prompt, uh, but before we do that, uh, this is a note here. Let's read it together. A personal narrative, what is a personal narrative? It's a story about something that happened to you. When you write a personal narrative, you write about a story that happened to you. So here's the writing prompt. Write a personal narrative about a problem or a difficult situation that, ha that you have experienced. Explain how you solved the problem or dealt with the situation. For example, you might write about a time your computer crashed the night before a report was due, or a time where you, uh, where you were stuck in an airport overnight. Include grammar points from units one, two, and three. So this is a personal narrative, write about a problem or a, situ or a difficult situation that happened to uh, you. Choose a problem or a difficult situation that you have experienced. Try to remember and choose a specific, uh, specific problem. Think about the situation. How did it come about? How did it happen? How did it happen? How did you deal with it? What did you do? Use the chart to organize your idea. So you have to fill this chart yourself to write the problem here or the problems maybe and the solution or the solutions. What did you do to get out of this problem? Think of a little, uh, think of a title of, uh, for your narrative. When you, write, when, uh, when you write your personal narrative, try to think of a title that fits what happened to you. Write your narrative. After you finish, write your narrative. Uh, here, developing your writing, the introduction. The introduction is the first paragraph of the article and it's extremely important. The first, par uh, the first paragraph of your writing is the introduction. The introduction should grab the reader's attention. So it should grab the attention of the reader by expressing something interesting that makes the reader want to read more. So it should make the reader want to read more. The introduction should also include a topic sentence that states clearly what the essay is about. So uh, the introduction should include a sentence, we call it the topic sentence, that gives the uh, whole idea about the article. All other sentences in the introduction should support the topic sentence. As you write your introduction, ask yourself, is this paragraph interesting and engaging? When you, when you finish the introduction, is it interesting? Is it engaging? Does it, want you, uh, does it make you want to read more? Uh, will it make the reader want to know more? Does it include a topic sentence that clearly tells the reader what the essay is about? Do the other sentences support the topic sentence? Are they all supporting for the topic sentence? This is, uh, uh, this is an example here, the day my computer crashed. I'll never forget the, uh, the last day of my freshman year at Abington High School. The year, had gone, the year had gone very well. I had made uh, new friends, enjoyed my classes, and was expecting good grades in all of my courses. But something unexpected happened on the last day of the year. I had done well in, uh, I had done well in Mr. Martinez's history class all year, so I was, I was not concerned when we were asked to write a final paper. In fact, I was even looking forward to it. 
I spent weeks in the library researching my subject, taking notes, and organizing my ideas. I had started writing the essay a week before it was due. By the night before it was due, I had finished writing the essay and just needed to run a spell check. But as soon as I began, as soon as I began the spell check, the screen froze. So this is a problem that happened to this person. The screen froze when he was before the due date uh, in one day. So before you begin to write your essay, this is an example. Try to write your own. Before you, uh, before you begin to write your essays, focus your attention on the box of developing your writing in the introduction. Then look at the sample essay, the day my computer died. Let's answer these questions together. Which sentence tells you what the essay is about in the introduction? The topic sentence. Yes, that's correct. Something unexpected happened. This is grabbed your attention. This sentence grabbed your attention. So this is the topic sentence in the uh, introduction. How does the introduction make you want to uh, know more about the story? Yes, it says that something unexpected happened, but doesn't say what it was. It doesn't say what it was. So it keeps you on your feet try to, you, that you want to know more about the story. How did the writer prepare to write the final paper? He or she did the research in the library, took notes, and organized the ideas. So try to make this example helpful to you to write your own. When did the writer start writing the paper? The answer is the week before it was due. What was the writer doing on the last night before the paper was due? What was he doing? Yes, he was running a spell check. What happened then when he was running a spell check? Excellent. The screen, the computer screen froze and the computer froze also. How do you think the writer will continue the story in the next uh, paragraph? So this is, of course, is up uh, to you, probably by saying uh, how he or she felt and how the problem was solved. And, uh, it, and when you finish your essay, reread your essay and revise them. Check to make sure that you use the grammar points from unit one, two, or three. Remember to use the grammar points, the auxiliary verbs, the passive, the past perfect, and the past perfect progressive, the adverbs of, the, of degree, and the sentence adverb. Remember to use all of these in your essay. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu la lanta astaghfirik wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.